Hi folks, and welcome to another edition of How I Tank, where I talk about game mechanics or how I play the game. Uh, and a lot of World of Tanks is understanding how the game works. And unfortunately, a lot of players, it doesn't matter what tier they're playing, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been seeing a lot of tier 10 players who don't understand game mechanics recently. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I'd hop back on the bandwagon and do some more talking about game mechanics. And today we're gonna be talking about ammo. Now, all of this information is freely available. Most of the information in my videos is freely available on the uh, wargaming.net wiki. Uh, as you can see here, wargaming.net wiki, and it's all about ammo. That's all we're going to be talking about today. Most of what I'm talking about is going to be contained on this particular page. So uh, if you want to go and check that out, I'll post a link below this video. And the first thing you need to understand when we talk about ammo in World of Tanks is the way that ammo actually works in-game. Not real life, but in-game. Because even though there are many, many, many different types of ammunition listed and ammo gets different names in World of Tanks, it all behaves under five categories. So, for example, we recently received a new Tier 8 premium tank for the Germans, a uh, premium bulldog, that fires something called HEP, High Explosive Plastique. Uh, but high explosive plastique is not listed on this ammo page for World of Tanks. Um, that's just one example of ammo that's used in a tank that isn't here. Uh, mainly because HEP performs exactly the same way as heat. So there are five ammo mechanics, even though HESH is one of those ammo mechanics. HESH doesn't perform in-game the way it does in real life. It performs slightly differently. So what we have is we've got five categories of ammunition, and no matter what the ammunition is called in World of Tanks, it's going to fall under one of those five categories of ammunition as regards its in-game behavior. So first of all, the most basic one is AP, armor piercing. We've then got APCR, which is Armored Piercing Composite Rigid. We then got uh, High Explosive, which is HE. We've got High Explosive Anti-Tank, which is Heat. And we've got High Explosive Squash Head, which is Hesh, mainly for the British. So they are the five types of ammunition mechanics in World of Tanks. So no matter what ammunition is called in the tank when you're firing it, it's going to behave exactly like AP or APCR or HE or Heat or Hesh, regardless of its name. However, before I go on to to try and explain how each of those types of ammunition, those five types of ammunition actually work within World of Tanks, I've got to explain the terminology I'm going to be using because there's a big glossary of terms when it comes to talking about ammunition mechanics in World of Tanks. Now the first one up is penetration. The word penetration, what exactly does that mean? This one's pretty simple, but I'm going to use paint to try and illustrate what I'm talking about and apologies in advance for my poor paint skills. So let's just assume we've got a square and well, we'll change the color. There we go. Uh, let's just assume we've got armor. This is an armor plate. Uh, it is vertical. It is 90 degrees to the direction we're going to be hitting it. Um, and let's just assume that it is 100 millimeters thick. So this is a 100, 100 millimeter thick sheet of armor. We're going to be shooting it from directly to the side. So we're going to be shooting it from here. Um, and we're going to be shooting it with, for example, a 120, or well, let's just say 175 millimeters. Let's pretend we're using a Russian 125 or 122 millimeter gun. We've got 175 millimeter uh, penetration on our weapon and we are going to shoot 100 millimeters of armor straight on. Now, because we're shooting it straight on and it's flat, that means that we've got exactly 100 millimeters of armor we need to go through. So that distance in red is exactly 100 millimeters. That is basic penetration. The armor is 100 millimeters thick. When we shoot it straight on, we've got to go through 100 millimeters of armor. That would be a pending shot with 175 millimeters of penetration on your weapon. However, things get a little bit more complicated when we talk about angled or uh, sloped armor. So let's assume we are now shooting at some sloped armor or angled armor. Maybe the tank is on a rise or maybe it's on a slope or maybe simply the tank has sloped armor to begin with. What we've got now is we've got our 100 millimeters of armor, except it's at an angle. And when we shoot it, unfortunately, the armor is no longer 100 millimeters thick. For example, from one point to the other point straight through, this is 100 millimeters. However, we're not shooting it at that angle. What we're actually doing is we're going to be shooting it at this angle. And what you can see is the red line is now much, much longer. So the armor 
thickness increases depending on the slope, which is why sometimes when you've got more than enough penetration to penetrate a tank, sometimes you're going to bounce or ricochet, which brings us to another term, but because of the sloping. Uh, you're now no longer shooting through 100 millimeters. What you're actually doing is you're shooting through what is more effectively about 160 millimeters at this angle, I believe. Maybe my math is wrong. I'm not a uh, physicist, but uh, that's pretty much how it works. So uh, basically sloped armor means that you've got to go through more armor for the same value. Even though it's 100 millimeters thick, due to the sloping, you've actually got to pass through more armor in order to penetrate it. So if we'd been shooting this tank with, for example, a German gun that had 110 millimeters of penetration, uh, we would be able to penetrate it if we hit it straight on because we'd only have 100 millimeters of armor to go through, but because it's now angled, that 110 millimeters of uh, penetration on our gun is no longer effective. It's not going to go through 160 millimeters of angled armor, and therefore what's going to happen is we get a ricochet. So, yeah, we don't like ricochets, but that's what happens. Yep, that's good enough. Okay, so now we get a bounce or a ricochet. So when a shell hits an armor plate that's greater than a certain angle, the shell bounces off the plate, and since a recent patch it actually continues traveling and can still do damage, you can hit other tanks with a ricochet, which you couldn't do in earlier versions of the game. Uh, you can also basically uh, hit the same tank. I mean, for example, if you bounce off a gun mantlet and the ricochet happens to bounce downwards, and into the top of the tank. You might actually manage to bounce a uh, shell off the gun mantle, it bounce down into the uh, roof of the tank and as a result still manage to damage him. So uh, ricochets, yes, there's no guarantee that it's going to actually not do damage depending on where the shell goes, but it's all down to a matter of look. You can't really plan something like that. And in some versions of the game, such as World of Tanks Blitz, ricochets haven't been implemented, or at least ricochet, ricochets that can do damage. However, this being World of Tanks, things are never quite as simple as they seem. So we'll go back to our straight armor here, and we're going to say that our shell has, let's say, again, we're going to stick with, let's just say 100 millimeters, just to keep things nice and simple. Okay, so let's assume that we're shooting 100 millimeters of flat armor with a 100 millimeter shell, and we would assume that, well, this is going to be a penetration because we only have 100 millimeters of armor we actually need to go through, and our gun has more than enough penetration to go through 100 millimeters of armor. That seems fine, it seems logical, but this is World of Tanks we're talking about because there are a huge number of other factors we are going to have to take into account when it comes to just the term penetration. First of all, we've talked about angle. The angle of the armor that you're actually shooting, including the thickness, affects your penetration, but a lot more affects penetration because what we've actually got here is we maybe have a gun that was has 100 millimeters of penetration, but thanks to the RNG factor, the random number generator, what actually happens is every time we fire our gun, assuming the RNG allows us to hit the target because we've got RNG when aiming and shooting a gun as well, but assuming, assuming we've passed all those RNG checks, we've actually hit the target, it's flat armor, it's 100 millimeters thick, we've got 100 millimeter uh, shell with our, our shell with a 100 millimeter penetration. Yeah, what's, what's actually going to happen is we get another RNG roll because when we fire our gun, as it comes out of the uh, barrel, it's going to have between 75 millimeters and 125 millimeters of penetration thanks to RNG because every time you fire your gun, there is a chance that the penetration values of that shot are going to be plus 25% or less than 25% of the uh, average penetration. So this shell here could be up to 75 millimeters to 125 millimeters, which is going to have a huge impact on whether or not you can pen or whether or not you're going to bounce. Even though your gun has more than enough penetration to penetrate the armor, it's possible you got a low penetrating RNG roll. But it doesn't end there, because not only do you have RNG regarding the penetration roll, but you also have RNG regarding the distance that the shot was fired from, because the penetration values on the gun are only effective up to 100 meters. So assuming that you actually shot from, say, 300 meters, your actual 
penetration not only is going to be affected by RNG, but it's also going to be affected by the distance you shot from, and a lot of ammo or some ammo characteristics that we're going to go into later lose penetration over distance. And that means that, you know, you may have a gun that should be able to penetrate this armor, but thanks to RNG and thanks to the thanks to the distance you were shooting from, you're going to have less penetration. So this is only effective at 100 meters. So uh, you've only got 100 millimeters of average penetration at 100 meters. If you're firing from above 100 meters, whoops. If you're firing from above 100 meters, unfortunately, your penetration is also going to suffer. So there's a lot of RNG involved when shooting. That's why sometimes when you've got a big gun and you shoot tanks from distance, it's going to bounce simply because you got a low RNG penetration roll or because you were shooting from so far away, the penetration lost distance over, uh, lost penetration over distance, I should say, so that by the time it hits the target, unfortunately, the penetration is a lot lower than it is required to actually pen it. Now, assuming if you've passed the RNG penetration roll and you're shooting from a distance where the penetration hasn't dropped off sufficiently to allow you to still pen your target, there's still another thing you've got to take into account, which is the fact of whether or not you are actually hitting the armor because there is spaced armor and tracks count as spaced armor. So if you hit tracks, that counts as spaced armor. How does spaced armor work? Well, we're gonna have to draw another line here. So we've got to go through spaced armor. So we've got, uh, let's assume we've got 15 millimeters of spaced armor. What now is going to has to, uh, now what has to happen is the shell, even though it may have enough penetration left over to go through. Ooh, I've been doing too much too much, too much, unfortunately, uh, deleting here. Assuming we've got to go through 100 millimeters and our shell still has enough penetration to go through 100 millimeters, we encounter the spaced armor. Now, unfortunately, what that is, is the shell now needs to go through 15 millimeters of spaced armor. So the shell goes through 15 millimeters of spaced armor. That means it's only got 85 millimeters of uh, armor or penetrating power left over. And 85 millimeters, unfortunately, is not going to be enough to penetrate the main armor of 100 millimeters behind the spaced armor. So even if a tank technically doesn't have any spaced armor, as I say, just remember tracks count as spaced armor, which is why so often when you shoot someone's tracks, you end up shooting them and doing zero damage. You may end up damaging the track, but you're not going to end up damaging the tank behind the track because the gun or the RNG roll or the penetration just didn't have enough left in it once it went through the spaced armor to actually go through the standard hull armor and damage the armor behind the track or behind the spaced armor. So when it comes to penetration, there is a huge amount to take into consideration. It's not just simply how much penetration your gun has on paper and how much uh, armor the enemy tank has on paper. Your gun might have 175 millimeters of penetration on paper and the enemy tank might have 100 millimeters of armor on paper, but it doesn't work out that way. You've got to take into account the angle that you manage to hit the armor at. If it's not flat, if it's angled, then unfortunately the armor is going to be more effective. If you've got to go through tracks or spaced armor, the armor is going to be more effective. If you're firing from a distance of more than 100 meters, then you don't have 175 millimeters of penetration that you think you do because penetration drops off over distance depending on the type of ammo you're firing. You've got to take that into consideration. The uh, penetration values are only accurate up to 100, mi uh, 100 meters. Uh, and then of course the big one, which is the complete RNG of every time you pull that trigger, whether or not you're going to have up to 25% more penetration or up to 25 less or 25% less penetration, a huge RNG factor. So uh, simply when you talk about penetration, as I say, it's not just simply knowing how much penetration your gun has and how much armor the enemy tank has. There are a huge amount of variables you've got to take into account, but it's all included under the, pen or under the umbrella penetration. The next thing we've got to take into consideration when we're talking about ammo in World of Tanks is the damage, because this one is actually quite simple. Just like penetration, it's affected by a plus or minus uh, or NG roll. So if you've got a gun, it's not affected by distance and it's not effective up to 100 meters. It's, it's just a flat figure. But let's say we've got a gun that does 100 damage, just keeping things nice and easy. So we've got a gun that does 100 damage. Assuming we've got the penetration and we've actually penned our target, we've passed the 
spaced armor, we still have enough penetration to go through the enemy tank, we've actually damaged the enemy tank, we expect to do 100 damage because that's what the stats in the garage tell us. But once again, there is a huge RNG roll here because it is plus or minus 25%. So again, we don't do 100 damage. What we actually might do is we might do anything from 75 damage up to 125 damage. Again, it is all down to RNG. Again, another thing to take into consideration when we're talking about the types of ammo and the types of damage they do in World of Tanks. Another term we've got to discuss before moving on to the types of ammunition used in World of Tanks and how the mechanics work in World of Tanks is normalization. Because normalization affects both AP and APCR to a smaller degree and doesn't affect the other types of ammunition. But what exactly is normalization? Well, when we come back to the basics, uh, we're on red, we're on a flat line, yeah, that's fine. When we come back to the basics, we've got our sloped armor here, and let's assume that the sloped armor, I, I have no idea what it is, but let's assume that this armor is 60, 60 degrees. It's at 60 degrees of angle. Okay, so this is where normalization comes into effect because in the basic explanation I provided earlier on, if you were to hit armor and you hit it flat, this is 100 millimeters of armor, or at least supposed to represent 100 millimeters of armor. If we were to hit that armor flat, it means that we only go through 100 millimeters of armor as the armor is advertised. However, because it's angled, it means that we've actually got to go through more armor because of that angle. It takes further for the shell to travel through the armor thanks to the angling before it impacts inside the tank. Uh, that's how it normally works, but normalization helps a little bit in cancelling this out due to the shape of the shell, both in real life and in World of Tanks, because AP and APCR have a slightly different shell shape to other types of ammunition used, and that means those two types of ammunition benefit from normalization uh, due to, as I say, the shape of the shell. So what actually happens is when the the uh, shell impacts angled or even straight armor, but has more of an effect on uh, angled armor. So uh, we're going to hit it straight on. What actually happens, instead of going straight through because it's angled armor, what actually happens is the normalization for AP, again we'll discuss this a little bit more in AP, it reduces the amount of armor the shell needs to go through because the shell or the tip of the shell hits the armor. Uh, the shell responds to the angle of the armor and the forward momentum keeps it going. So what actually happens when you're firing AP is you get five degrees of normalization, which means instead of hitting armor at 60 degrees, when the impact happens, you actually only go through 55 degrees of angle or the equivalent armor of 55 degrees of angle instead of the full 60. When you're firing APCR, again, it's not as pronounced but you get two degrees of normalization. So instead of having to go through the full 60 degrees of armor thickness, what ends up is you end up having to go through 58 degrees of armor thickness. So uh, normalization is basically reducing the number of degrees of angle of whatever armor you happen to be hitting. So two ammo types benefit from normalization, uh, again, based on real life, and it happens in World of Tanks as well. The next term it's important to understand before talking about ammunition is the velocity. Speed of the shell as it leaves the gun, as in how much distance it can travel before impacting the target. Uh, so velocity is very, very important. Different ammo types have in general, different velocities assigned to them. Now, there are exceptions. I mean, it is possible HE traditionally has slower velocity. It means it reaches the target a lot slower than, for example, an AP shell would. Uh, therefore, you've got to lead the target. That's the most important thing about velocity, is how much target lead you need to give when firing, depending on the distance you are from the target. But, uh, the, you know, it's, it's not written in stone. In general, in general, for example, as I say, HE is slower than AP, and AP leaves the barrel at a faster velocity or it gets to the target quicker after firing, but it's not always written in stone. There are exceptions for ammunition in the game depending on the tank you're driving. So for example, there are some tanks that do have very high velocity, or velocity even if you're firing HE, and there are other tanks that have very, very low velocity even if you're firing AP. It seems to be a balancing factor, but in general, what's important to know about ammo types is velocity. The speed of the shell as it leaves the gun, it affects some ammo more than others. Some ammo have traditionally slow velocities, although there are exceptions. Some ammo have very high velocities, but 
Again, there are exceptions. It actually depends more on the tank than the type of ammo, but in general, that rule holds. Two other terms we need to discuss when we're talking about how ammo works in World of Tanks are caliber and overmatching. Now, usually, caliber has absolutely no meaning. A caliber is simply how big the shell is in diameter when it leaves the muzzle of the gun. Uh, basically, the bigger the shell, the bigger the gun, the bigger the caliber. Um, so caliber has absolutely no bearing on the damage, although usually bigger caliber shells do more damage. It has no bearing on the penetration. For example, the E100, you can mount a very large 152mm gun on the E100, but yet it's got pretty poor penetration for a tier 10. So the caliber of the gun does not affect penetration, but it does affect overmatching. Now, what exactly is overmatching? Well, this is a scenario that you run into. I mean, I've posted clips of myself bouncing on, for example, Arty when I'm firing a Object 263, or at least I will be. I've got one of those clips pre-recorded somewhere. Um, I've got clips I've put up in the past of bouncing on ELCs with 122 millimeter guns. So how exactly do you bounce on tanks with no armor when you've got very, very big guns? Well, this pretty much explains it here. So. This, assume this is only 40 millimeters of armor. Assume it's the roof of a tank, the top of a tank. It's only got 40 millimeters, sometimes less, of armor. But if you hit it at the right angle, look at all of this armor you actually need to penetrate before getting to the tank itself. Maybe you don't even penetrate the tank. Maybe the shot goes completely through the roof and out the other side. But even the thinnest armor is possible it is possible to have your shots absorbed or bounce simply because it hit at a really bad angle, meaning the shot has to travel through most of the armor. And then the 40 millimeters, as I say, the 40 millimeters only matters when you're hitting the armor flat. So that is 40 millimeters. But if we've got to hit across the roof of a tank, then sometimes, sometimes, as I say, you're going to bounce on a scout or you're going to do no damage to a scout. And you're asking yourself, how the heck did that happen? It's probably a scenario like this, except except when there's overmatching that comes into effect. Now, what overmatching is, is it's something that allows AP shells or APCR shells to penetrate thin but extremely well angled armor, like the roof of a light tank, for example. Now, what happens is that it's based on the caliber. So let's assume we've got 40 millimeters of armor on this uh, roof of, I don't know, whatever tank we're talking about, but yet we've got, we're shooting a 120 millimeter gun. Now, that is the caliber. That's not the penetration. That's the caliber of the gun. So, for example, you know, a 122 millimeter for the Russians or the Chinese could be 175 millimeters of pen. For example, the case of the IS. The IS has 122 millimeter that does 175 millimeters of penetration when you fire it. However, we're not talking about penetration here. The uh, IS-3 also has a BL-9, which is a 122 millimeter. But yet, the IS has 175 millimeters of penetration, and the IS-3, also with a 122 millimeter gun, does 223 millimeters of penetration off the top of my head. So the caliber is different from the penetration. Penetration can be altered for reasons of game balance, but not the caliber of the weapon. Now, what is important here is that the 122 millimeter is actually three times higher or over three times higher just than the 40 millimeters of armor we're trying to penetrate. That is overmatching. So basically, if your caliber of weapon is four or over three times higher, not the penetration, but the caliber of the weapon is over three times higher than the tank you're trying to penetrate, it's an auto pen. You're going to penetrate that tank regardless of the angle of the armor. So if this was a IS firing at a tank with 40 millimeters of armor, even at this extreme angle, the actual shell would penetrate and do full damage because it's overmatched. Uh, French, higher tier French TDs have extremely weak side armor. So even, even if a French TD, they might be heavily armored from the front, but even if they're showing you a fraction of the side, even it, if it would be side scraping on any other tank and you wouldn't be able to penetrate any other tank, you're going to be able to overmatch the side armor 
on most French TDs, simply if they show you a slight sliver of side armor, simply if your caliber of gun is that high. Likewise, in higher tier games, you might be shooting the roof of an IS-3, or you might be shooting the roof of an IS-4. If the caliber of your gun is high enough, and you have three times more caliber than the millimeter of armor that the, whatever target you're shooting at, then it's going to be an auto pen, regardless of the angle. And the last term, finally, we've gotten to the end. The last term you need to understand when we're talking about ammunition and the different ammunition types is splash. And most of you know what this is. Uh, basically, splash is where a tank fires. It affects more than HE. A lot of people assume HE is just splash, but it actually affects a couple of different types of ammunition. Uh, splash is simply the circle of damage that is done when HE or another ammo type hits the target. Uh, so basically, it doesn't even need to hit the target. So if we have, for example, a tank, we'll change that there. Let's say we have a tank and the uh, shell impacts here and actually misses the tank. Because of this circle of splash damage, because some of the enemy tank is within this circle, we are going to end up doing some damage to him. I'll explain how that works when we're talking about HE and another ammo type we'll come to in a moment. Splash is simply the circle of damage that happens when uh, certain types of ammunition hit the ground or more unfortunately or more often hit the target. Uh, but there we go. We are done with the terminology. That is pretty much everything you need to know. Now let's move on to the actual ammo mechanics in World of Tanks. So we're going to start with the most common type of ammo fired in World of Tanks from the low tiers and even maybe less so at the higher tiers, but it is the most common shell fired, which is standard AP or armor piercing. Now in real life, as you probably know, this is just a solid chunk of metal fired at high velocity from a gun. Uh, it basically gains its power through kinetic energy. Basically, if it's traveling fast and the bigger it is, the more damage it's going to do when it hits its target. If if you see the rounded head here, this is what gives this shell its first characteristic, which is normalization. Uh, does AP have normalization? We talked about normalization earlier, and the answer is yes, AP has normalization thanks to the shape of the shell, and it gets a whole five degrees of normalization. So if you hit a target that's at 40 degrees, then it basically means the target is effectively 35 degrees of angled armor as opposed to the 40. So it is easy easier to actually go through some angled armor firing AP thanks to normalization. And thanks to the fact it's just a solid clump of metal, it means that when it hits the target, it doesn't do anything special. It's designed to punch through that armor, and that means it overmatches. It doesn't do anything to the surface of the target other than to try and penetrate it. So AP is also capable of overmatching armor if you've got a gun that has a caliber capable of doing so. And after two positives for AP, we come to a negative, which is distance. Unfortunately, AP loses penetration over distance. Now, that may sound bad and it is a negative, but unfortunately, there are no exact mathematics regarding how much penetration is lost over distance. It seems to be on a tank-by-tank -tank basis. I know that out there, if you go digging for it, you'll find that some people have broken down the game files and they've figured out that it is really a tank-by-tank -tank basis. For example, some of the lower tier tanks, even though they've got high shell velocity and decent penetration, uh, once their shell reaches 360 meters, they lose over 56% of their penetration after 360 meters. Uh, other tanks, uh, for example, I think off the top of my head, a T-71, uh, it only loses 1.1% of uh, penetration, although that does fire APCR, but the point is that the uh, it loses 1.1% penetration over 360 meters, so uh, it's very, very different uh, per tank. It seems to be a tank-by-tank -tank basis, and it seems to be a balancing factor put in by Wargaming, and the actual information or the true information or the true values are very very hard to find uh, but you can if you search on Google for penetration loss over distance then you'll probably find some people have put together spreadsheets on a tank by tank basis but there seems to be no specific calculation
We're back to positives in that AP can penetrate objects such as walls and still hit its target. Again, that was a update made in a more recent patch. When I first started playing World of Tanks, you had to shoot down walls even with AP before you could shoot the tanks hiding behind them. Thankfully, that was patched out of the game long ago. So uh, you can penetrate tanks even if you can't see their outline by shooting through walls, by shooting through uh, an inanimate objects like cars or buses or tractors or trailers. Uh, if the object can be penetrated, AP will penetrate it and can hit targets on the other side. However, a small amount of penetration, again the exact calculations are unknown, a small amount of penetration is lost by your shell going through another object before striking a tank. Now assuming that your shell has the penetration necessary to pen a target, the next thing we need to know about AP is the fact its penetration angle is at 70 degrees. That means that any tank that is angling and whose armor is more than 70 degrees unfortunately is going to ricochet your shot. So it can penetrate armor up to 70 degrees. Moving on to velocity and again this is a tank by tank basis. In fact some tanks even fire more than one type of AP. Some tanks have premium AP um, but on average AP is considered uh, to have average velocity because there are some ammo types that are by average slower velocity, there are some ammo types that are by average faster velocity, but really it's a tank by tank basis. Uh, there is no real way of saying that it is better or worse because as I say, some tanks have high velocity AP, some don't. Um, it's basically a balancing factor. And finally we have splash and AP has no splash damage because as I mentioned it's a solid chunk of metal flying through the air at relatively fast speeds. It impacts the target and the bigger the shell, the heavier the shell, the faster it impacts the target at, the damage it does its damage that way. There's no HE, there's no explosion, there's no splash damage. So uh, it can be a positive, it can be a negative depending on the situation and again some RT that you know some RT like splash and some RT are so good they can fire AP and splash doesn't matter they can hit tanks directly but uh, AP definitely no splash so overall AP seems to be very balanced there are very few negatives and yes it does lose some distance over penetration but as mentioned it's on a tank by tank basis um, you know it has very few disadvantages it has normalization up to five degrees it can overmatch it's got a decent penetration angle it can penetrate objects and the velocity isn't too bad so uh, it's a very very balanced type of ammunition and therefore it's used by most tanks or a lot of tanks in world of tanks use it especially in the lower mid tiers uh, when when you get to the higher tiers people tend to use other ammunition if it's available but it still doesn't mean that AP in higher tiers is not viable. Moving on we've got the second most fired category of ammunition in World of Tanks which is APCR. Now this is premium ammo on lower or mid tier tanks and when you get to the higher tiers you can find APCR fired as standard on a lot of tanks but um, APCR performs exactly the same way as AP does in that it uses it's basically a solid chunk of metal flying through the air at ridiculously fast speeds and it does its damage by hitting a target and penetrating it using kinetic energy. The difference between APCR or Armor Piercing Composite Rigid over the AP is the fact the shell design was slightly different in that it was the center of the shell that was heavily armored or dense me metal and the outer edges or the uh, shell or the outer shell of the APCR was uh, lighter metal. Uh, as a result the APCR your shells in real life are lighter than the AP shells so they work the same way but they're essentially lighter than AP shells allowing for easier transport and easier storage. Starting off with normalization and yes because these APCR shells are basically just AP slightly differently designed it does get normalization that they both work the same way that is flying through the air at large speeds and using kinetic energy to damage the target so it does have normalization but you'll see that the normalization is only two degrees compared to the five degrees that AP has which means that it is less effective still effective but less effective against sloped armor than or angled armor than maybe AP is in some cases. Um, it does it overmatch armor? Yes, because it's essentially AP just designed slightly differently. So if your caliber of gun is big enough, you can overmatch armor just like the AP can. And yes, because it's just a different type of AP, it's going to lose uh, uh, penetration over distance. Now again, this is subjective because for example, tier 10 tanks that fire APCR as standard 
unfortunately don't they actually don't lose penetration over distance um you know again for balancing reasons however if you're firing apcr in lower tier tanks or maybe as premium ammo it will tend to lose penetration over distance quicker than ap does but again it's a tank by tank basis and there doesn't seem to be a basic average or general calculation for it uh can it penetrate objects yes because it's a solid chunk of metal you can shoot through walls you can shoot through cars in order to hit tanks on the other side and the ricochet angle again because these perform very very similarly to AP is 70 degrees as well and the shell velocity on average again it's on a tank by tank basis but the shell velocity uh, because it's a lighter shell in real life it travels faster than AP does and in game likewise on average APCR reaches its target quicker than AP does not you know again it's it's not incredibly quick but you know it is noticeable in game especially on some tanks so shell velocity on most APCR is usually better than it is on AP one of the big positives APCR has over AP uh, and splash damage again because it's a solid chunk of metal uh, no splash damage Moving on to one of the third most common types of shell or shell mechanic in World of Tanks and that is heat or high explosive anti-tank. Uh, this is usually premium ammunition and you're more likely, although you can come across it in lower tiers, you're more likely to come across it in higher tiers. Um, heat high explosive anti-tank, although unlike its name uh, HE, uh, it performs more like AP or APC or in its uh, mechanics in World of Tanks than it actually does HE, which is a completely different mechanic we'll get onto in a moment. Uh, the reason it gets the name HE anti-tank is the fact it's got a high explosive tip to its shell, and that means that, uh, again, in real life and in World of Tanks, if it impacts an enemy, it needs to impact enemy uh, armor. When the uh, high explosive tip goes off, it basically creates a molten stream of molten metal uh, that penetrates the armor. Doesn't sound very pleasant, uh, but uh, that means it has got a lot of positives and a lot of negatives as you can see here so first of all uh, normalization the heat shell because it needs to impact an enemy tank in order for this explosive head to go off it has no normalization it just needs to hit the armor and that's it the head goes off so no normalization no plus five degrees or plus two degrees for ap or abc or uh, however it also means it doesn't overmatch armor so unlike ap or apc or which uh, can overmatch armor if the caliber of the gun that's fired it is three times higher than the actual armor thickness of the tank you're shooting at. Uh, heat doesn't overmatch, so it's heat is it's all down to its penetration values. Uh, if it can penetrate the tank and it's not at an extreme angle, it will, depending on the penetration roll or the RNG penetration roll. Uh, when it comes to distance, uh, because it impacts the tank and all its explosive power is based in this high explosive uh, warhead or tip it means that it doesn't lose penetration over distance the penetration is based on the he all you have to do is hit the enemy tank so a big 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 positive for heat ammunition here it doesn't matter what distance you are from the target whether you're 10 meters or 400 meters you're going to have exactly the same penetration uh, close range as you do at long range so no uh, penetration drop off over distance uh, negative for the uh, heat ammunition is the fact it can't penetrate objects so if you're firing heat you can't shoot a tank on the other side of a wall you can't shoot through the wall or through a car or through a uh, bus or whatever it is you're shooting through it behaves like HE in that matter so you're going to be wasting your shell and it can be expensive considering that HE or heat is usually premium ammunition. The ricochet angle, however, even though it doesn't get normalization, the ricochet angle is greater at 80 degrees than it is on AP or APC or so. Again, heat relies on its penetration more than the uh, normalization or the angle of the enemy armor. Um, so I, again, I'm not 100% sure. Um, again, a lot there's a lot of information that's been written about heat out there. A lot of it is dated, um, but interesting, and a lot of it. Uh, seems to contradict itself because there have been updates to the game since but um, uh, I would guess that usually AP or APCR is more effective against sloped armor but um, heat heat does have a better ricochet angle so whether that's a plus or a minus I don't know but uh, 
yeah it, I guess because it's got a higher ricochet angle the normalization doesn't matter as much uh, now the shell velocity because heat is a very very light shell compared to AP or APCR it's a very very light shell it means it travels through the air a lot slower the shell velocity is actually a lot poorer on heat at distance it takes a lot longer to reach the target so uh, again that's another negative for heat and it has even though it's called HE anti-tank it has absolutely no splash damage so uh, again don't let the HE fool you however uh, having said that even though there seems to be a lot of red here uh, heat it's it's two major positives is the fact it doesn't lose penetration over distance and the fact that uh, it has incredibly high penetration values to begin with. So even when you would maybe bounce with an AP or APCR shell, uh, because of uh, low penetration or high penetration RNG rolls, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're using heat, uh, heat because the penetration on heat is so high in the first place, uh, you might actually find yourself penning shots that you would normally expect to bounce in an AP with an AP or an APC or round. Again, I don't really fire a lot of heat in very many tags, so. Um, there is a lot of information out there regarding the mechanics of heat, but that's just the basics. It is not the I win button that a lot of people give it credit for. It does have positives, but it also has quite a few negatives. But the biggest positive has to be its extremely high penetration to begin with. So when is it good to use heat or when's the best time to use heat? Well, heat is best fired uh, at heavily armored targets, believe it or not, because the penetration values of heat is usually a heck of a lot higher than it is on AP or APCR. So, for example, Russian tanks can have uh, penetration of around 200 millimeters with their AP or APCR, but they have 330 millimeters of penetration with their heat, which is why you see so many higher tier Russian tanks firing heat or spamming heat. Um, so heat is very, very good against very thick armor. I mean, 200 millimeters of armor is usually considered good, at least, you know, mid tier to you know, lower, higher tier, uh, but 200 millimeters is nothing compared to a heat shell that has 330 millimeters of penetration. So it's fine, fine to use against thickly armored targets. So when is it not good to use heat? Well, it's usually not good to use heat against things like spaced armor, because spaced armor, let's change the color there, spaced armor means that the heat shell impacts on the spaced armor and as we've already discussed, heat has problems going through objects before reaching the enemy tank, and that includes tracks, that includes spaced armor. Now, there are some sources and there are some people that say that yes, you can penetrate tanks through spaced armor if you've got enough penetration on your heat shell to begin with, but, or, or maybe the spaced armor is very, very thin, but um, on the other hand, it's not reliable, I don't know. To be honest, I haven't penned too many tanks through spaced armor with heat. I could be right, I could be wrong, those sources could be right, those sources could be wrong, but in general, you're not going to want to use heat against spaced armor or tracks. Uh, those tracks or spaced armor are just going to eat the shell before it can actually impact. That's the wrong one, I hate my paint skills before it can actually impact the armor. It's going to lose a lot of penetration, it's going to explode on impact, and it is possible maybe you could do some damage to the tank, but as I say, don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure. Heat is the one mechanic in World of Tanks I still get confused about because there are so many sources that are contradictory. And finally we come to HE and HESH, which I'm going to bundle together because the mechanic for HE and the mechanic for HESH in World of Tanks is almost identical, even though in real life they perform differently. But essentially, this is a shell packed with high explosives, at least for the purpose of the game it is. And that means that there is absolutely no normalization and no overmatching. It doesn't matter what caliber the weapon you're firing is, unless you happen to be firing AP with that weapon, but we're not talking about AP. Uh, there's no overmatching if it's HE or HESH you are firing. Now, because you're firing an explosive package, it means that it does not like heat, it does not lose penetration over distance. So uh, it doesn't matter how far from the target you are, you have the same penetration values. Um, now, HE usually has much lower penetration values than HESH, but again, if it hits the target, it has pretty much the same properties. Uh, can they penetrate objects? And the answer is no. Just like heat, they will go off on other objects. Things like spaced armor, things like walls or tracks or buses, 
So you've got to hit the target directly or quite near the target because they have splash damage, a positive. So penetrating objects is a negative, but they do have splash damage, which is a positive. So if you do penetrate or do hit an object close to an enemy, tar or enemy tank, then you can actually do damage to them with Hesh or HE. Uh, they have absolutely no ricochet angle because they detonate on impact. So it doesn't matter how angled the enemy tank is. It doesn't matter how slow their armor is if you hit them the uh, explosion is going to go off um, now the negative part is the velocity and again this is mainly mainly down to the HE because the HE's velocity is incredibly poor um, compared to other types of ammunition it's just HE it's not metal it's going to be a lot lighter than other shell types and as a result the time it takes to hit the target is very very slow. Uh, Hesh is slightly quicker, it's got higher penetration values, but uh, to all intents and purposes the shells behave the same. Now like I say, HE and Hesh have some of the most complicated damage uh, calculations and most complicated penetration calculations of any of the ammo types in the game, so I'm going to try and do my best to explain it here. So uh, we've got a tank, let's assume this is the front of the tank, we've got 65 millimeters of armor, and that's the roof of the tank, it's only 15 millimeters of armor. Now. We're going to ignore the roof for the moment, and because the shell has looped in, because HE usually has a, it's kind of a more of a derpy type of shell, hence, hence the name derp, um, it basically just loops its way to the uh, target, and again, it ignores the fact that it's hitting armor, or it's hitting sloped or angled armor, it will hit. Now, let's assume that straight away we'll keep things simple, that the HE or the HESH has enough penetration to actually go through the frontal armor, maybe 65 millimeters thick it penetrates it goes through that 65 usually because it's coming in at an angle and it penetrates once it goes through the tank it explodes and it explodes in a conical shape from the uh, point of impact so it'll go through the armor then spread out and do its damage in a conical shape maybe injuring crew members maybe injuring or damaging modules from uh, the point of impact from there you're going to assume you do full damage. So HE normally does more damage than other shell types if if you get a penetrating hit. Uh, now again, that's RNG based. So, you know, the shell might say it does 750 damage, but that's plus 25% damage or less than 25% damage average or NG. But uh, the main point is it travels out in a conical shape and damaging anything it happens to come across and I believe it the impact happens in 45 degree or roughly 45 degree angles. So basically anything that gets impacted by this will be damaged potentially by HE and a penetrating hit. So that's why HE is so devastating when it actually penetrates. But where it gets very, very complicated with Hesh and with HE is when it doesn't actually penetrate the armor. And this is where things get very, very complicated because this is where splash damage mechanics come into effect. Let's assume our HE shell only has 40 millimeters of penetration and the armor we're trying to penetrate is 65 millimeters. We fire the shell and it impacts on the surface of the armor, but it doesn't have enough penetration to go through. Therefore, the shell explosion and the splash radius happens on the outside of the tank. Well, what that means is that a lot of the damage that is done to the enemy tank is expended in directions where the tank isn't it's going to go through the mid air. It's going to lose damage. Even though you've got high damage, you're going to lose damage because a lot of the explosion is basically disappearing into thin air. Now, where the splash also comes into effect is if there is another unfortunate little tank that happens to be sitting beside the first tank, they can be hit by this explosion. If there's another tank that's sitting beside the tank you hit, they can be hit by the splash radius. And again, depending on the HE shell, different HE shells have different splash radiuses. RT tends to have bigger splash radiuses than tanks firing derp guns, for example. But if anything is, uh, if any armor is encountered, it doesn't matter what tank it belongs to within this splash radius, they can effectively receive damage. But while some of the damage is absorbed by the air and expended outwards, a lot of the damage can actually go towards the tank you actually hit. Uh, and again, from the point of impact, the way this works is there are calculations that calculate 
just how much damage is lost by going through the armor from the point of impact. Now, if uh, basically you've got a HE shell that does enough damage and the armor isn't thick enough, it is possible for some of the explosion to get through the armor and do a little bit of damage inside the tank. That's why HE is usually going to do damage. It can do zero damage if the armor is thick enough. If the armor is thick enough, then basically the armor is going to absorb all of the damage. Uh, for example, if you've got a low caliber HE shell and you're shooting 200 millimeters of armor, yes, it's very, very unlikely it's going to actually get through that armor to do damage inside. But as I say, if you're firing something like an arty that has huge damage, maybe up to 1250 damage with HE, and you hit armor that's 200 millimeters thick, then some of the damage is not absorbed. The armor will absorb a lot of the damage, but some of it will leach through, th or through into the tank in order to do HE damage, even with a non-penetrating hit. So let's assume that the tank we're shooting happens to have spaced armor, we manage to hit tracks. As a result, because HE detonates on impact, it will detonate on the spaced armor. That means that the point of impact is on the spaced armor and not on the hull of the tank. That means that the damage starts to leach off through the spaced armor, has to penetrate the spaced armor, then has to go through more air before hitting the hull of the tank. Uh, and then it's possible that by the time that happens, a lot of the damage has been absorbed and fails to penetrate the tank. But again, some may leach through. It may have a little bit of damage or a little bit of uh, damage potential left. A little bit may still get through to the interior of the tank and it may do a little bit of damage, but spaced armor can actually prevent HE from doing a heck of a lot more damage to your tank than you give it credit for. Now, one important thing to remember when using HE is that this damage is calculated from the point of impact. So even though this splash radius is covering the 15 millimeters of roof armor we have up here, because the splash radius or where the point of impact is, uh, we can't actually reach that. Uh, we can't go through this thinner armor on the roof because we impacted here, which is why sometimes, sometimes you can do a lot more damage if, for example, let's say we had a large cupola. Let's say we had a large cupola just over the, or maybe the turret on the top of the roof and our shell impacted here on the uh, cupola. Then the splash damage would include the 15 millimeters of engine armor or roof armor or whatever it happens to be because the splash would then splash again in 45 degree increments out from the point of impact. So it is possible that you would do more damage to lightly armored uh, surfaces if depending on where the shell actually hits. But uh, yeah, I used to believe it used to be within the entire circle and that's not quite true. It's from the point of impact. So uh, just something to bear in mind when you're using HE. So let's talk about Hesh for a moment because in real life what actually happens is when Hesh hits a target, uh, the shell explodes and what it does is it plasters the surface of the enemy target or the enemy armor with high explosive that then on a time delay of a few milliseconds then explodes and what this causes is fracturing inside the, uh, the hull of the tank uh, and small little bits of metal, small little bits of uh, paint suddenly splash into the interior of the tank, even though there was no penetration, doing damage, killing crew members. So uh, Hesh works a little bit differently in real life. Uh, in uh, World of Tanks, Hesh simply works uh, exactly the same way as HE, but with much, much higher penetration values. Let's actually do a straight line. Uh, much, much higher penetration rolls. So as a result, you're going to penetrate and you're going to be doing much, much, much more damage. So you're probably going to be doing full damage, much more chance of penetrating. But just like HE, Hesh is very, very weak against spaced armor or tracks. So if you hit spaced armor or tracks, uh, the shell is going to impact and detonate before it actually reaches the hull of the tank, in which case it behaves just like HE does.
And there we go. I was expecting to get this video done in a couple of hours, and it has taken me all flaming day. Uh, this has taken me longer to do than a, than a is it worth it? Um, but speaking of which, there should be one of those coming up on the channel quite soon. Uh, all this information is available on the What Wiki, as I say, and the link is below the video. Um, and I may have got stuff wrong because the ammo mechanics in World of Tanks are quite complicated. Uh, it's very, very situational, and they get changed per pa you know per patch. Some of the information I was researching uh, or researched when I first started learning about ammo a couple of years ago has completely changed. I mean, H or heat, the heat behavior. Heat got major nerfs, um, and heat behavior from some of the guides is completely different to the way heat performs in-game now. So if I got any of this information wrong and you want to correct me, please do below. This is just how I understand how the ammunition works. But anyhow, uh, that was another edition of How I Tank. It's very, very important you know how the game works. I hope you take something away from it, and I didn't just spend the last, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but hour or two talking to myself. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.